Hi, this is Dr. Song. For most cataract surgeons, over 90% of cataract surgeries are routine cases. The remaining less than 10% are challenging cases where multiple variables come into play, requiring us to anticipate various scenarios before proceeding with surgery. But even with thorough preparation, unexpected situations can arise, leaving us second-guessing our decisions. Let me share my experience and together, let's explore if there could have been a better way to handle such situations. There were some issues with the recording system that day, so the footage may have interruptions here and there. I appreciate your understanding. This is a very dense cataract with no red reflex, so I'm staining the anterior capsule with ICG. When performing the anterior capsule puncture for capsulohexis, I had a sense that the zonals felt weak. However, there was no significant difficulty during the CCC. When the zonules are weak, it's critical to ensure that hydrodissection is done perfectly. Additionally, it's recommended to refill the anterior chamber with helin, confirm that the nucleus rotates freely, and then proceed with phacoemulsification. The nucleus was hard and tough, making it challenging, but thankfully the phacoemulsification was completed without significant issues to the zonules. The I and A procedure was also completed successfully. At the time, I didn't notice anything unusual, but upon reviewing the video, I realized that the capsular hexis shape looked a bit off. Comparing it to the initial capsular hexis, it's clear that the shape had become more oval. This indicates that the zonules on the upper and lower sides have significantly weakened. I didn't think it would cause any major issues, so I proceeded to insert the IOL and remove the viscoelastic material. However, just as I was about to adjust the patient's head position, it was a sudden and unexpected situation which caught me off guard. But it was clear that the zonules on the superior side had been significantly compromised. What should I do now? My mind is racing. To be honest, a capsular tension segment would be ideal in this situation. But in Korea, we can only use standard tension rings even though I knew it would be difficult to manage such a wide zonular defect with a tension ring, I decided to give it a try. Normally, I would thread a 10-0 proline suture on one side of the tension ring in case I needed to remove it later, but that thought completely escaped me in the chaos of the moment. Ah, now even the vitreous has prolapsed and is caught in the probe. Even attempting reflux doesn't release the vitreous. In this situation, you should never just pull the probe out. You must first cut the vitreous before proceeding. Using micro scissors, carefully sever the entrapped vitreous. In such cases, it's essential to administer additional subtenon anesthesia. Now it's time to take a deep breath and calmly figure out the next steps. If I leave it as it is, the IOL will inevitably decenter and dislocation will occur sooner or later. Since there's no capsular segment and no capsule adhesion, the belt loop technique is not an option. I have no choice but to remove everything and proceed with scleral fixation. First, I need to remove the CTR. If only I had done a rescue suture, this would have been so much easier. Judging by the situation, since I'm planning to remove the capsule anyway, I just need to push it to one side and hook the CTR hole. It wasn't possible with just one hand, so I used the chopper in my left hand to push the IOL towards the 6 o'clock position, exposing the capsular equator at the 12 o'clock position. Using a Sinsky hook, I carefully hooked the CTR hole and was able to remove the CTR. Now it's time to remove the IOL. Typically, removing an IOL is a relatively simple process. Bring it into the anterior chamber, cut it in half and take it out. However, with half of the zonules already compromised, 
Bringing the IOL into the anterior chamber felt risky. Instead, I grabbed one haptic and pulled it out through the main incision to secure the IOL before cutting it. Afterward, I removed each piece one by one, completing the IOL removal. The main incision was sutured with 10 zero nylon, and a 23 gauge port was created to prepare for pars plana anterior vitrectomy. A thorough anterior vitrectomy is essential for successful scleral fixation. Using triamcinolone, confirm that there is no remaining vitreous. Now, let's fill the anterior chamber with OVD and prepare for the scleral fixation procedure. I plan to use the Yamani technique, so I start by marking two points 180 degrees apart for symmetry. Next, I insert 27 gauge needles into the sclera, creating scleral tunnels as I go. The three-piece lens is then placed into the anterior chamber. Using a modified Kim technique, I externalize the leading haptic while attempting to needle the trailing haptic first. While needling the leading haptic, I must have lost my grip, and unfortunately, the haptic broke. Staying focused until the very end is so important. I removed the fragment stuck in the needle by withdrawing it and carefully used forceps to remove the piece floating in the anterior chamber. Next, I created a new scleral tunnel with a fresh needle and carefully attempted to needle the shortened haptic again. Moving slowly and cautiously, thankfully I was able to create a flange successfully. I brought the trailing haptic outside the eye and trimmed it to match the shortened leading haptic. When I checked the centering, it still wasn't quite right. After shortening the trailing haptic a bit more, the centering now seems perfect. Finally, I injected triamcinolone to check for any vitreous traction and performed additional anterior vitrectomy as needed. Myoko was used to induce meiosis. Since the pupil shape near the main incision looked irregular, I used a Sinsky hook to confirm there was no vitreous traction. I then secured the incision sites with additional 10 zero nylon sutures and concluded the surgery. When unexpected situations catch you off guard, remember this. Keep a cool head and steady hands. After all, this is your surgery, your moment to see it through. If you found today's video helpful, please consider subscribing.